Greetings everyone, and welcome back to Pep Organ. Today I've got a very special review of an iPad app. Now you may have seen my review of Fourscore, and if you've seen that, then you probably know that I'm a huge fan of technology, especially in the way that it can enhance our musical life and our musical practice. Um, today's app is one developed in the UK by a small team, um, and it's called PlayScore 2. If you haven't heard of it, um, that's why you've come to the video, because you're about to learn some excellent things about this app, which I really want to share with you all. Now I had the great privilege of meeting the CEO of this app, Anthony Wilkes, and I'm really grateful to him and to Annabelle for having me on a Zoom call. Anthony and his team have been working on PlayScore 2 for a few years, and they're constantly updating and improving it. So even after I put this video out and you're watching it, there's going to be more and more features to discuss. So what does PlayScore 2 actually do? Well, in a nutshell, it allows you to take photos or scan score PDFs into the app. Uh, and this app is not just for iPad, but it's also for Android and for iPhone. Now, once you have that score, what you can do with it is turn it from just a PDF or a scan into playable notation. And the app is able to instantly play back the material that you scanned in. Uh, this is really helpful for practice. If you want to slow down the score or speed it up or break it down, you can actually separate out the parts and all sorts of things. And we're going to be talking about that in the review. This is already being used by all sorts of ensembles. We've got a number of groups of, of users, but choirs are certainly a big one. Um, pianists um, and instrumentalists, very, very much singers generally. And there's the, the, all the tech people who want to get um, uh, music into their doors and so on. Part of the intention was for it to be useful for choirs. It's particularly helpful. Um, I'm a choir master and director myself. I can already see the utility of this for my choir taking scores that I need them to learn, separating out the parts, and sharing them with the sopranos, altos, tenors, and basses. It's a really great way to do that, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it right now. Now, the very first thing I'm gonna show you is just getting up the PlayScore 2 app, which I'll show you here. I'm gonna try out the very most amazing feature of it. Um, maybe not the feature that you always wanna use, but definitely something that was part of the original intention of the CEO. See, um, the idea behind this from years ago was that why can't we have a program where you can take a photo of a piece of music and instantly hear it? So you see Beethoven, you take a photo, and then you can hear Beethoven. And this is really the part that makes, that blew my mind and it probably might blow your mind too. So let's see, I'm gonna go to the camera setting here and we're just gonna get a sheet music. I've got some old Chopin here. Um, and let's just see what happens if I take a photo. There we go, make sure it's... All right, so it immediately starts playing. Um, let's just adjust the tempo to what Chopin sort of intends. Go back to the beginning and let's have a listen. Absolutely genius. Um, and you can see, if you didn't notice, that it's actually doing the dynamic markings as well. So that's the most genius thing that PlayScore 2 does, but we're gonna see all sorts of other features it can do. So the first thing I wanna show you is a really practical use of it. So let's talk about choirs. Now, if I have a piece of choral music, for example, um, let's get just one up, for instance, that I've already downloaded. Hopefully you're all aware of how to use IMSLP or CPDL if you're looking for free public domain scores, um, that's really helpful for this program. They really work hand in hand. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna start with is just a piece of music. So this is Lord for thy tender mercy's sake. Um, you can see that this is something that someone's input into um, some kind of music notation software. You wanna make sure that when you're scanning a PDF into PlayScore, that it's in modern notation. There are plans, hopefully, that they can start reading other forms of notation and uh, older printing, you know, 17th century, 18th century notation perhaps. But you've got to remember that this is extremely complicated AI that's trying to negotiate and work out these uh, notations. And PlayScore only has to work with the image that they're given. Unlike Sibelius, where you input everything, this is working backwards and just looking at the image and trying to reconstruct a score. So here's, here's Ferrant what we'll do with it. Um, I could have downloaded this on my iPad, but what I'm just gonna do is airdrop it over. So that should be really easy. 
So I'm going to open it in PlayScore 2. When you open it in PlayScore, the first thing you're going to see is this configuration part. Um, now, I really want to stress that there's a help button here, and that is there really to help you out a lot. So you tap that, and it will give you some dialogues, um, some help bubbles about what everything does. So um, tap above a page to make it the first. Maybe if we had a score that, for instance, had a title page, or there were some extra indexes at the, bot at the back, or it was a part of a multi-movement piece of music, you don't want all of the pages to be there. So what you would do is just go into here, and you would tap the top, and that, that you can start the page there, the, the score there. You can start it there. You can tap underneath, you can start it there. So that's just a simple tool to make sure that you've got what you need. Once you've done that, click Done. And now we've got the PDF exactly as it was here. And we should be able to get some playback. All right, so it's working. Now you'll notice that all the parts playing right now are just pianos. Piano is the default sound. Um, it's, a good, it's a good MIDI instrument just to hear the clarity of all the different parts. But if we want to change it, we can easily do that. So let's just look at what we can do here. First off, um, I think this might may be a little bit faster. So we'll, we'll change the tempo here. Um, let's go to our instruments. So you'll see that you've got a list of instruments here. Um, which correspond to the staves. So we've got six staves here. Remember that this is this might not always detect that it's the one, so it's going to be six staves. Yep. Maybe I'll change the choral parts. I could change them if I wanted to some kind of instrument. We could have an oboe. I actually like the clarinet. The clarinet sounds very clear. Now, why am I only doing it for the soprano part? Um, that's because maybe I want to share this with the soprano section of my choir. If I want to share it with the sopranos, then if we put, bring out the oboe for their part, they will hear it much more clearly. Then for the other parts, just to make sure that they hear it perfectly, we'll just lower the other parts down just a little bit. So this is a volume knob you can change here. You'll notice there's also a transpose, and we'll see why that's useful later on. So let's just lower everything else. And here's what it's going to sound like. Notice how the playhead also follows as, as you're going. So I've just shown you how to make, for example, a soprano practice track. What do I want to do with it now? Maybe I'm going to go share, and you can click Save Document. You could also save it as MIDI. That would allow you to put it into um, other instruments. Or you can save as Music XML, and that's very useful too. But let's just do Save Document for now. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to airdrop it. So here's my um, other iPad. Now, I've deliberately made sure to just install PlayScore 2 on this. Some of the features that I'm using for this demonstration require the professional edition. The free edition is something that all your choir members can download for free and use what you're trying to send to them. So I'm going to airdrop it, open with PlayScore 2. All right, so now we've got what exactly what we just sent. So let's have a listen to that. Change it to vertical mode. There we go. This is very clever, as you can see. Can it read other features in the score? What about this repeat? We've got a repeat here. Um, OK, so there's a repeat. And where does the repeat end? Here. Let's see what happens there. Hmm. Okay, so I read the repeat. It did make one or two little mistakes there. There will be the occasional errors, and this is just, it can be all sorts of AI things that don't quite understand what was correct. Um, there are ways to try and correct this, but sometimes you just have to live with that. As for the repeat, you can see that it's able to read the repeat. With this score, I found that it couldn't determine between the first bar of the repeat and the second bar, so it would play the first bar both times. So there's little things like that. But as a practice track, you'll see that it's really helpful. OK, the next demonstration will be of Mozart's Ave Verum Corpus. Now I'll show you a few other things you can do in PlayScore this time. So first off, we'll just airdrop it to the iPad. And you could do this 
you could download it directly to the iPad. It's entirely up to you how you get it onto your score. Right, so here we go. So we have the, uh, the score right here and we'll just click done. Let's get the tempo up a little bit and have a playback. Good, that's working. Good. Again, it's pianos um, as before, so we can change that if we want. Let's say now that we want the alto track on its own. So maybe we just have the altos and maybe just a little bit of piano accompaniment just so they can hear there, hear the context of their part. So here's the alto and we'll give it a um, clarinet. This time I've completely muted the soprano, tenor and bass. Right, so that works. Maybe that was a little bit soft, so maybe I can just adjust the piano again, make it a little bit louder. It's, it's all entirely optional how you want to approach this. If you want to stop the score just straight away, you double tap. If you want to start it again, again double tap, we'll get it back up and running. Um, if you want to choose a particular spot you want to go to, then you just tap to that spot. Let's just restore the other parts and I'll show you something else you can do. Now this is not a feature that I particularly need for this piece, but it is something that you may want in another one. So this one is, and again you can tap the help if you want to see what these things I'm talking about are. This one is crop and mask, okay? So cropping would be if you wanted to, oh sorry let me do that again, if you wanted to cut if some part of the music or the piece that you've taken an image of has some other music that's reading that you don't want read, you can cut it like that. Maybe if there was some other thing that you wanted to be skipped, you can add a mask, okay? So maybe um, you just want to not hear the accompaniment for this bar, so you can mask it like that. Let's see what that what it actually does. So you can see it's just been blurred out in the score. Right, so it's just skipped, it's just skipped over that in the in the accompaniment. Let's just extend that mask to all the parts now. So we're just going to hear now the soprano in that bar. Okay, so it generally works. You may have to fiddle around with the masking just a little bit. Sometimes maybe I, that was not so good because I had put the mask over the bar line. Maybe just keep it outside of the bar line to see if that does a bit of, better job of that. There we go. So I've just fixed it just with that small change. Uh, it was masking and going over the bar and it was kind of getting confused there. So I just fixed it, just put the masking within the bar and that fixed it. Okay, something else you can do. Uh, let's just go in here. There's all these settings. Now this is some of these settings are professional only. One of them, um, which I have played around a bit with and um, I've heard that it's very useful in certain features is this thing called error correction. It's on by default. Uh, there's also these options for sampling an image. So maybe if a part of your score is not quite reading correctly, particularly with photo score, photos that you've taken, you can go to sampling and try to adjust this a little bit. And you can see it's rendering in real time. It's reanalyzing what you've scanned in. And maybe you can darken it so you can have a bit more contrast. Let me just do it a bit more dark. Uh, it's going to try and correct there's all sorts of clever AI things going on in this program, you've got to understand. So a lot of it, it's not all fleshed out, and it may, maybe it never will be, because it's very, very complicated. Um, you've seen those sort of tests that they give to AI the, these days, whether they can identify certain animals and objects, and this is the kind of thing that they're doing with cars, right? With electric um, self-driving cars. This is the same kind of technology, but it's recognizing uh, notation. And notation is not some clean thing. It's not quite like text because notation, it, it, it's, um, there's all sorts of different variables and fonts and styles and we're never going to get it all right, but it does a very good job. Now what I'll show something else you can do, which is absolutely amazing, I will say, um, in these settings is, um, well, there's dynamic range. Now that is for those pianos and fortes. If you just want the dynamics off, you can turn them off. If you want them to just be less variable, you can do that, or if you can have them fully wide, maybe if you've got you know, huge fortissimos and pianissimos, maybe it's hard to hear your parts, so you can just reduce that a little bit. 
Play repeats is what I was talking about with the front. So it detects repeats in the score. You can turn those off, just tap off the off button. Auto transposition is something more helpful for orchestral scores. We may have a look at that. Um, with these vocal scores, you may notice that sometimes your score, the tenor part, is just written as a treble clef. And we all know as singers that the, treble, that the tenor should be singing an octave lower. How would you fix that? Quite easily it, it, it happens. Um, you just go into these play and MIDI settings again. And okay, the third part would be the tenor because we've just looked and the third line is the tenor. So part three, we could transpose it. And of course, if, it, if it's an octave, then we're going to go down 12 semitones, right? That's a full octave. For this part, it's not needed because we already have it in bass clef, so it's at the right, it's at the right tone. Uh, something else we can do uh, is these things called split stave, swing, and lyrics and text. I'm just going to show you lyrics and text now. What that does is it allows a play score to detect the text that is in this score. Now, why would you want to do that if it's already displayed? Well, because you can go to share, and this time I'm going to share it as a music XML. So I'm going to share it to my MacBook Air over here, which has Sibelius installed. And I'm just going to do it, share it right now. So let's just see if it comes through. Right, so I've just put the music XML file in. Now this may vary for you. I'm using Sibelius 8.5, which is not quite the most modern. For some reason, it doesn't detect a music XML file, but I can just delete the word music, and XML is a very known format, and immediately it detects that it's a Sibelius file. Um, I'll open it in Sibelius, and let's see what happens. Let's go through my settings and bring it in. Okay, so you can see here that it's, it's done, done a pretty good job. Let's see what it does. Right, so it's playing. Now, isn't that clever? It's actually taken what was originally just a PDF, and now we've got it into Sibelius. And you know what that means if you're a um, music editor like me. That means you can now edit the score. You can actually change the notes. You can add in dynamics. You can change all the sorts of things. And of course, you can change the MIDI sounds. It's already quite clever because it's detected that soprano, alto, tenor, and baritone are in fact uh, singing voices. So they've already given you the instruments for those singing parts. Now there are a few errors here, and I'm still trying to work out why these happened. They look like some kind of um, crescendo marking or a hairpin that's kind of gotten confused. Yeah, you can see that they're sort of here. So it's not going to be perfect. You're going to have to go in and edit a few things yourself, but that's usual. That, that's that been pretty much expected um, for a long time. This will continue to improve as the technology gets better. Uh, if you come in here and you can see also a few other things show up like here, for some reason, a staccato has shown up here in this soprano part. Maybe just a dot on the score, who knows? So little things like that may have to be adjusted. You may have to add in dynamic markings, and you may want to also change the stems and, you know, just go in and fiddle with a few things. Ah, look, it's even preserved the masking that I put in. It's cut out that bar that I took out. So, yeah, it knows what to do, very much so. So, that's the XML um, benefit that you can, the exporting that you can do with PlayScore 2 really genius technology because that allows you to do so many more things than the the app alone can do um, that means that if you've just taken a photo like i showed you with the chopin now we can turn that into a score right now with our edited score i'm going to do what i did last time and i'm going to save this as a play score document so um, i might call this one for example in the title auto before i send it and then another one i can call you know tenor and then share it I'm going to send it to a member of my choir, for instance, which is going to be my iPad mini again. Um, so here we are with the score. Let's just make sure that it's playing. This is, remember, this is on the free edition, so it, it will work. Right, so it's remembered that it's the alto part that I've put into the clarinet. Um, it remembers all those features. It's even remembered the tempo marking that I gave. So if I want my choir to know exactly the tempo that I want, you can do it that way. But of course, if they want to slow it down, you can see that they can actually just slow down all the way here. And if they want to sing it slowly and have a listen. Something else you can do uh, is this feature here called count in. 
this is just a helpful way of, it gives you just like a little beat into a bar, for example. Right, and if that can happen at any point in the score. So you could do here. So the count in is helpful for also getting you into a particular spot. The other thing that's very helpful is what's called a loop. I'll show you what a loop is, okay? So let's say that I want to practice just this, this section here, um, and I want to, I want to just hear how it, exactly how it goes, uh, maybe this section. So I'm going to tap, hold, and see how this is now giving me this option here. This is going to be a loop. It's going to go back to the previous bit. This is a really helpful way for them just to hear back and hear over and over again what their part is without having to keep tapping it and so on. So loop is another helpful feature. You've got count in and you've got loop. Now what if you have a member of the choir who doesn't have an iPad, doesn't have an iPhone, they just don't want to download the PlayScore app. You've still got an option as long as they have a computer. So this is a, just a quick method that I thought of. Um, you could do some other ways as well. You could have exported it to a MIDI and, and, or some kind of PDF. Um, but you can also do it this way, which is to just go into your iPad screen recording option. And then you can just go ahead and record the actual performance of the piece. And of course, when you've done that, you can stop the recording and you can share as a video their part and then they can scroll through that on a computer. So you can see that there's many different ways you could share the music with your choir or with an orchestra. Um, this is also going to work with any kind of instrument. Let's have a look at the organ now because of course this is pep organ. So um, what can we do with a, a piece of organ music? What I've got up here just really quickly is a, a suite by John Ireland that I really love. This is the miniature suite. Um, you may know the Intrada and the Villanella that I've played on the channel. Let's, have, let's just share that to the iPad again. Right, so this, is, this shows where it's really useful to actually cut out pages because maybe I just want to play the intrada for now. So I'm going to cut out all of those. And then on this side, uh, let's just have it cut here. Okay, so we've got three pages. Great. You'll notice that this is a little bit more of an old notation. So it may struggle with a few bits. Let's just first get the tempo to the one that we want. Something good. That's really good. That sounds quite, that sounds acceptable to me. I have gone through this and there are parts where you may have a mistake or something just cuts out for a moment. Um, that can happen. You just have to be careful about that um, and just be aware that it's not going to be perfect. Now, that was obviously piano again. If I want to change it to organ, I can. I will admit that I'm not such a fan of this organ sound. If I don't like the organ sound, I can do anything else. Um, I can have... I actually honestly think that piano is the best for even, even for organ or harpsichord, just because you've got that clear sound. You're not playing this to hear a perfect instrument. You're hearing it to try and identify where you're making mistakes when you're practicing. That's the harpsichord sound. Right. Oh, that was a spot see there where it didn't quite pick up the parts. When you do this, you really should try your best to get a modern score. That's, that's the main important um, aspect. Just for a fun experiment, let's show you what happens when I import a score that's just too much of an old notation. So here I've got Stanford's Mag and Nunc in B flat major. Um, you probably may know this one if you're in the Anglican tradition. And you probably know that this, this part as well because this is the score that a lot of us do use. It's, you know, it's nice and old fashioned, um, but it's not going to work well with play score two. You see, see how the, the notation, it looks clear for, for a human eye, but there's still work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. 
So obviously there's something going terribly wrong there. Um, it may not be picking up all sorts of things. You've got those old uh, crotchet rest markings. You've got a lot of breaks, which it may not like. It may not appreciate any of those sort of difficulties. So um, that's not an issue with old music, of course. What you can do is just find a better version online. So, so for example, I can go to Stanford um, Mag and Nunc B flat, and we'll go CPDL. So we should get a result here. Let's just look for one that's uh, new. Right, that looks better. So I'll download that one, share it. All right, that's looking better, and let's just see if it plays better. I'll speed it up. Perfect, so it did, a, it did a very good job of that. So I'm happy with that. Just make sure that you have a modern score. Let's look at a hymn now. Um, I just want to show what a hymn, what you can do with a hymn in particular. Okay, good. So again, we've just got the parts again. So what I can do here is another feature that I told you about before, which is split staves. Okay, now with split staves, which I've turned on, these parts, you've got two parts on per stave. What you can do is it can actually see that there's different volumes for the different staves, for the different parts, that is, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. So now I can again create practice tracks and sort of reduce the other parts, just so I can hear, maybe I can want to hear the alto again. So here's the alto. Great. Uh, I can change the sounds of it as well. So that's what split staves does. Let's try this on a bit more Mozart. I'm going to use the uh, Rondo alla Turca. So this is a piece of piano music. Again, I've got a good score. It's even detecting the accents. It's doing the repeat. It's even doing those little mordant type things. So it's really quite clever. Let's just say I'm practicing the piano and I just want to hear that right hand. You know, piano players want to practice on their own. So you can just take out the left hand. Right, so that works. Uh, maybe I don't want to hear those repeats right now. I'll turn off the repeats. Um, can we do it swung? How would Mozart sound if it was swung? It's a good way to show off this. So you can go along and have a lot of fun with that. You can also have a lot of fun with turning up the tempo as far as, as fast as you want. As you could do on any other notation software. Finally, we're going to have a look at uh, a orchestral score. Um, now, orchestral scores were not really the intention of this, uh, of this app, but it can do it. And I'll show you what you can do in that sense. So here we are with Mozart's Piano Concerto number 21. I might just get the second movement. So I, have to, I, have to, I just have to scroll my way through all of this and make sure I've got it. Won't do all of it now, but let's just, let's just do the first couple pages. It's not particularly good at doing all these pages and all these giant scores right now. What it's done though, is it's got given us our parts. I've made, made sure again, it's a good score. We've got flute, oboe, uh, we can change all of those. So of course we've got a flute sound, don't we? Flute, oboe, uh, fagotto, that would be bassoon. Um, then we've got, what is that, trumpet, piano. And then after the piano, it's gonna be the strings. Let's have a play. Again, it's doing a very good job of, and remember that this is not Sibelius. This is not, it's also not trying to immediately scan all the music in the world and find what this score is and try and fake it. It's doing it all from what it sees. So it's able to read the orchestral score quite well. Uh, and then the functionality of that is that you could reduce all the volumes and do all the same things I did with the choir. And then you'll have a really great score and you can practice along with it if you're an instrumentalist. 
So hopefully that gives you a taste of what PlayScore 2 is capable of. As I said earlier, this app is still in development. Um, Anthony is still working with his team on all sorts of things. So keep, keep supporting the app and more and more features will come out. One instrument that I thought would be useful to have is some kind of percussion. Oh, yeah. that's, <laughs> <I'm sorry>. that's <laughs> coming. <laughs> yeah, that's, okay. that, that will be the release after this. We're, we're just about to release one. We've got one on the uh, all uh, oven ready. Um, it has one of the things it has is a metronome as well as a counting. And this is a smart metronome which knows about uh, time signatures. And the release after that will have a um, percussion. For now, if you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to Pep Organ and sharing it with your friends. And we're also going to be doing a giveaway. If you want a chance to use all these amazing features that I've shown today in the professional edition of PlayScore 2, I'm going to be giving away five free copies for a one year subscription. Those copies will be going to the first five people who donate to our PayPal at Pep Organ. This is just to help our channel and support the videos that we make and the content that we produce. So if you support us, you will get a chance to use PlayScore 2 for free for a year. And remember that only one person needs the professional edition, or your choir can use the free edition to use the, the app. And thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to Pep Organ and like this video and share it with your friends.